we're thrilled to introduce GPTs. GPTs are tailored versions of ChatGPT for a specific purpose. And because they combine instructions, expanded knowledge, and actions, they can be more helpful to you. They can work better in many contexts, and they can give you better control. Have you ever wished you could say something in 30 seconds instead of 5 minutes? Well, there's big news in the AI world, and OpenAI is at the center of it all. Recently, Sam Altman shared a cool trick. It's like a superpower. So what is this about? He says if you struggle, ask a friend to listen to you and then repeat it back in a shorter way. But imagine doing it dozens of times. Crazy, but it works. This idea is backed by loads of research. It's like training a mini version of a smart AI on what the big one knows. So there's this cool project called ARCA2 where they teach small AI models how to think. They used a big brainly model called GPT-4 to teach smaller ones how to solve puzzles. One puzzle was like putting a story in order, like when a lady gets upset, then a cop writes a ticket, then there is a car crash. GPT-4 nailed it, so they fed this smartness to a smaller model called ARCA2, which Microsoft worked on. ARCA2 did just as well as models way bigger than itself. Pretty impressive. Now, why does this matter? Well, on April 28, this Sam Altman talked about having a friend repeat things to you over and over again. But it makes sense when you think about training smaller AI models with made-up data. There is a new model called GPT-2 on the scene. It's amazing. Not only can it think really well, but it can even answer tricky questions like why a kilo of feathers weighs the same as a kilo of lead. This GPT-2 is so smart, it solved a super tough math problem in one try. And it even knows how to buy sneakers online step by step, like setting up accounts and stuff. That's way better than what we are used to seeing from AI. It's like AI is becoming super savvy and thinking ahead. Well, it's like this AI is getting ready to be more independent, like you tell it what to do and it figures it out on its own. And it seems like it's been trained just for that. Now, rumor has it, GPT can answer a math problem with just a number, and it did it. That's something we haven't seen GPT-4 do, but there's always a chance for glitches. So let's take it with a pinch of salt. But overall, this AI seems like it's really stepping up its game. When asked a question, GPT-2 doesn't just give a short answer like usual, it actually thinks it through and responds with more than just a couple of letters. Some folks even think it might be doing some sneaky thinking on the side, like using invisible notes to help it figure stuff out. What about its art skills? GPT-2 can draw a unicorn, and it looks pretty legit. Some say it might just be copying from the internet, but it's still impressive. And when it comes to coding, it's a real pro. People are saying it's even better than some other fancy models out there. So who made this wonder? Sam Altman seems to be behind it. He seems to have a soft spot for GPT-2 according to his tweets. And he even edited one of his tweets to make it sound even cooler. Now this whole thing just shows how fun and quirky OpenAI is. It's not some boring big company, it's got personality with cryptic tweets and all. So there's a big debate going on about some bills that might limit what AI can do. Some folks like Hinton and Benjo think it's a good idea to have laws to make sure AI is safe. They say it's important to balance the benefits of AI with the risks it might bring, especially in areas like medicine and democracy. But not everyone agrees. Some think these laws could hurt startups and open source projects. They worry it might give big tech companies too much power and make it harder for smaller players to compete. One big concern is about something called derivative models. Basically, if someone makes a new AI based on an existing one, it might be considered illegal under these laws. This could really impact how open source AI models are shared and used. So, it's a tricky situation with strong opinions on both sides. So, the words in these bills are super important because they decide what's allowed and what's not. But, there is a bit of good news. If someone trains an AI model completely from scratch, it's okay under these laws. So, using something like Llama 3 to train a new model wouldn't be a problem. But if someone combines an AI with other software, things get tricky. For example, if someone attaches a legit AI to malware and it causes a ton of damage, they could be in big trouble. Like, serious felony trouble. Now, there's this pamphlet floating around talking about the risks like cyber attacks and creating dangerous stuff using AI. It sounds scary. We need more info and discussion to really understand what's going on. Personally, we are all for open source. It's great to see folks looking out for potential problems, but we gotta make sure we're not just shutting out the little guys. 
Let's keep an eye on this and see where it goes. Here is what Senator Scott Weiner has to say about it. So, Senator Scott Weiner is jumping into the conversation with Brian Chow. He says, the world of AI policy is moving fast and it's good to have different opinions. But he also thinks some stuff in the discussion isn't quite right. He points out that Jeffrey Hinton and Yozua Banjo, who supported the bill, are big names in the AI world. He even throws a bit of a humor, asking if people would sue Microsoft if someone used their software to create ransomware. He clears up some confusion about the bill, saying it's not like making a small mistake would land you in jail. But if someone creates an AI that causes major damage and they didn't do enough testing to prevent it, then they could be in trouble. So, it sounds like they're trying to balance keeping things safe without going overboard. But there's still a lot to figure out, especially with all the technical details involved. So, Senator Scott Weiner is stepping in again to clear some things up. He's saying that the bill he's backing wouldn't put people in jail for small mistakes. But they could face some civil penalties if their AI causes major damage. But some folks are calling him out saying they don't agree with his take. And others are chiming in saying they're glad they don't live in California because of all this. One big question is, where does the law apply? Like, if someone uses AI in Europe to do something bad in California, does the law still count? It's all kind of confusing. And then there's this whole thing about effective altruism, which is supposed to be about helping people, but some think it's really about stopping AI. It's like they're using one thing to hide their real plan, it's all pretty shady if you ask us. It seems like some organizations are pretending to care about certain issues just to get people on board. They use fancy words like effective altruism to hide what they're really up to. It's like they're saying we're all about helping others, but behind the scenes, they have a different agenda. It's kind of like if we started a group called Don't Kick Puppies, Please Donate Today. Sounds great, but who knows what our real mission is until it's too late. Then, there's this other group that's all about helping the poor. But really, they're focused on stopping some big scary thing called existential risk. They want to keep that part quiet because it might scare away donors. So, they talk a lot about helping the poor to get people interested, but their real goal is something else entirely. It's all a bit sneaky if you ask us, like, why not just be honest about what you're really about? So, there are some pretty weird things going on in the EA community. They talk about stuff like freezing yourself to live forever, making yourself super smart with drugs, and even having multiple partners. As people get more involved in EA, they're pushed to focus on things like AI risk. But it seems like they're being tricked a bit. They're told one thing, but then the conversation gets switched to something else. And some big names in the EA world are involved in all this shady stuff. But let's not forget about the important stuff like AI safety. There is a lot of debate about it with big donations flying around. It makes you wonder, are these rules really about keeping us safe, or is there something else going on behind the scenes? Only time will reveal all those details. Do you think the AI sector will enormously grow beyond recognition? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you go. We will meet you in the next one.